Hello everyone, welcome to Earth and Life Science Class, Quarter 2, Week 5. By the way, I am Dr. Vernie Tudicano, Master Teacher and TVL Coordinator in Papandan National High School, Senior High School. I am glad to present to you the different organ systems in representative animals. Our human body is uniquely organized and carefully and wonderfully made by God to perform astonishing different functions. It is so special in many ways that it exhibits proper coordinations among organ systems and yet completely ordinary in other ways. We are quite familiar with many organ systems that comprise the body of advanced animals. We share a lot of similarities with other animals, yet we are definitely higher creatures than any animals created in this world. Our module falls under the melts or most essential learning competencies of quarter to week five. We have two lessons contained in this module, and then we have six learning objectives for today. In the previous lesson, you gained an understanding of genetic engineering and GMOs. Genetic engineering is also called genetic modification and it is one of the many branches of applied biology. Genetic engineering was discovered in 1953 when James Watson studied the structure of DNA, after which scientists were able to understand and change the structure. We have learned about genetically modified organisms. They are the organisms whose genomes were engineered in the laboratory to favor the expression of desired physiological traits. Then you have to know the genes which are the specific sequence of nucleotides in DNA which are located in the chromosomes. But before anything else, you have to accomplish the pretest first. In lesson one, we will discuss the unique characteristics of the different organ systems of some animals. It provides you the concept on how some animals from varied habitats differ in their ways of exchanging gases from their body and environment. It will further illustrate the different digestive systems of some animals and will give your idea on how and why some animals can digest food easily than other animals. In order for the most of living organisms to survive, they constantly need basic nutrients such as oxygen, water, carbohydrates, protein, lipids, vitamins, and minerals. The basic nutrients can be taken out from food that they eat. These certain nutrients are the daily requirements of their organ systems to remain healthy, continue to grow, and sustain life. They must also eliminate metabolic waste products. In the previous lesson, you come to know the levels of organization which starts at the atom level, going up to cellular level, tissues, organ, and organ system. The heart is the center of the circulatory system. For advanced animals like human, we can find the 11 major organ system. Let's start it with the circular system. This organ system is also called cardiovascular system. The word cardiovascular has two words coined together. The first word there is cardio, which it pertains to the heart, while vascular, which also denotes the blood vessel then the blood as another organ. While in the digestive system, these are the mouth, esophagus, stomach, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, small and large intestine, rectum, and anus. With regards to lymphatic system, organs under this are the bone marrow, which is located inside the bones, thymus gland, located behind the sternum and is only active until puberty ages 13 to 15, lymph nodes or lymph glands which are located in our neck, armpit, and groin. Another organ is spleen and is located near left of your stomach. And finally, the tonsils. These are the two organs considered lymph nodes on each side of the back of your throat. Your appendix is also an organ under lymphatic system. Alongside the immune system, we have the organs such as the WBC, antibodies, complement system, when we say complement system, this consists of a number of small proteins synthesized by the liver. They enhance the ability of antibodies and the white blood cell to fight infection. Then you have spleen, thymus, bone marrow. Then what about the muscular system? This system is composed of specialized cells called muscle fibers. 
Our body contains a lot of muscles. However, these muscles are categorized as skeletal. They are voluntary muscles which are attached to the bones. We have smooth or involuntary muscles that are located inside the wall of intestines. And the third one is the cardiac muscles of the heart. Following the muscular system is the skeletal system, which is mainly composed of bones and Cartilage. connective tissue, including cartilage, tendons, and ligaments. Axial skeleton are the bones in our head, rib cage, sternum, and spine, and appendicular bones in our limbs and shoulders. We have 206 bones all in all. Coming up is the reproductive or genital system, which made up of all the anat anatomical organs involved in sexual reproduction. The male reproductive organs are penis, scrotum, testes, epididymis, bus deferens, and urethra. In female, they have uterine tubes, uterus, vagina, ovaries, which is the primary organ in female. The external structures in female are labia majora and minora and clitoris. The accessory glands are seminal vesicles and prostate gland in male, while Bartholin's glands in female. Next is the endocrine. This organ system is a chemical messenger system, meaning it sends chemicals such as hormones, secreted by glands under the control of the hypothalamus in the brain. I'd like to stress here the organ hypothalamus, that in all vertebrates, this hypothalamus is the neural control center for all endocrine systems. We have nine glands, including hypothalamus. Next is the nervous system. The word nervous relates to the nerves. So this system is mainly composed of nerves and specialized cells known as Neurons. These neurons carry signals to and from all parts of the body. This system is otherwise known as the body's electrical wiring. Our body is carefully and wonderfully wired by God to prevent short circuit. Then we have the respiratory system. This organ is the network of organs and tissues that makes us breathe. The respiratory system includes the nose, mouth, throat or pharynx, voice box or larynx, windpipe or trachea, airways or bronchi, lungs, and skin. Proceed to the urinary system, otherwise known as the excretory system. It consists of organs which remove waste products and toxins from the body. This includes mainly of the kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra. Besides the urinary system is the integumentary. The integumentary system is consists of the skin, which is the largest organ and is called integument. The structures or growth that cover the skin are the feathers of the birds, scales of the fish, hair of mammals. Included in the system are the claws, nails. We have to consider also the exuding glands such as sweat glands, sebaceous glands, serominous glands, and mammary glands. Our daily activities that we perform are made possible due to the function of this different organ system. Functionally related organs often cooperate to form whole organ system, yet each organ system is a group of organs within the body that can be thought of as working together as a unit to carry out a specific task or function within the body. Now, let us discuss the functions of the different organ system. Let us start it with circulatory system. The function of organ system is for transport of gases, hormones, and waste products throughout the body. Circulatory system permits blood to circulate through and from the cells in the body to provide nourishment and helps fight the invasion of foreign substances. Healthcare provider listens to the beat of your heart and take your vital signs such as heart rate, pulse rate, and including your blood pressure. For the digestive system, it converts food and water into building materials for living tissues. It also breaks down food absorbs nutrients, and finally removes waste through elimination. It is this organ system that performs the task of turning your food into nutrients and energy you need to survive. It is responsible also in packaging your solid waste for disposal through bowel movement. Now, with respect to the respiratory system, it is this organ that helps your body absorb oxygen from air in the external environment so your organs can work. The healthcare providers listen to the chest lungs to get your vital signs such as respiratory rate and oxygen saturation. Going to the next organ system, the lymphatic system 
is a vital part of immune system. These two organ systems are capable of producing and processing specialized white blood cells that fight infection and cancer. Many immune system cells use the lymphatic and circulatory system for transport throughout the body to identify and remove foreign substances present in organs, tissues, the blood, and lymph. Next organ, the muscular system. It facilitates movement and locomotion, provides instruction mobility, and even controls the movement of materials through some organs. For the next slide is the skeletal system. It facilitates movement and locomotion. It provides structure and mobility, and even controls the movement of materials through some organs. Most of the time, skeletal and muscular system are two organ systems that support each other to promote movement. That's why they are called musculoskeletal system. For the nervous system, it relays electrical signals, directs behavior and movement, and helps control physiological processes such as digestion, circulation, respiration, etc. Everything your body does is connected in some way to your nervous system. It tells your heart to beat faster. It tells your lungs to breathe. It controls the way you move, even the words that you say and how you think and learn today. It also controls your senses and memories. Now, with regards to the reproductive system, it manufactures cells that create and support new life. The major function is to ensure survival of the species. Next in line is the endocrine system, which regulates hormones and relays chemical messages throughout the body. This organ system is a collection of glands that produce hormones that regulates metabolism, growth and development, reproduction and mood. Let us forward to the urinary system, also known as excretory system and be called as renal system. This organ system produces, stores and eliminates urine the fluid waste excreted by the kidneys. And to complete the 11 major organ systems is the integumentary system. This organ system is the set of organs that forms the external covering of the body and protects it from any threats from the external environment. That ends the first lesson and we proceed right away to the next lesson. In this lesson, we will explore how organ systems work together to keep animals, including humans, survive. Say for instance, the blood in our circulatory system has to receive nutrients from your digestive system and undergo filtration in your kidneys. Let us take into consideration the hollow organ, which is the heart. As a central part of the circulatory system, the heart is primarily responsible for pumping blood and distribute oxygen and nutrients throughout the body. Because of this task, the heart may be considered one of the most important organs of the body alongside brain, liver, lungs and kidneys such that even small dysfunction or abnormalities may cause drastic changes or effects in the human organism the heart while resting the pulse rate usually ranges from 70 to 100 beats per minute but when you perform a more intense work your heart tends to pump faster to supply oxygenated blood to your cells the normal size of your heart is a little bit larger than your fist. The heart doesn't stop pumping blood to your circulatory system. The right side of your heart receives unoxygenated blood from your body and pumps it to your lungs for oxygenation. Then the oxygenated blood from the lungs enter the left side of your heart to pump it all to all parts of your body. The average heartbeat as it expands and contracts is about 100,000 times, pumping about 2,000 gallons of blood. The heart pumps the blood with the help of other organs in the system. It is responsible for collection of waste products and pass it to the next organ, to the kidneys, to filter and clean the dirty blood. It supplies the brain with oxygenated blood. Failure to do so within 6 minutes, the brain dies irreversibly. The 100 billion brain cells called neuron die instantly. There's no room of repair. So the heart does its task to provide enough oxygen to your brain. The brain controls the movement of your muscles and bones. When it receives a stimuli such as the smell of your food from the brain, it recognizes it and interprets and gives signals to your digestive system that you are hungry and must eat. Before we end up this module, let us answer the question for today.
All right? So you have learned the individual functions of the organ system and on how these systems work together. It is awesome to know the mystery of the trillion cells in our body to live within the laws of nature. Each cell works like a computer micro-machine made up of many components. All of these components must have enough energy to produce many different molecules for its structures and function. It is truly amazing that we ought to praise God, the creator of everything. Psalmist King David says in Psalms 139 verse 14, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. How about you? Do you know him so well that he created you in his own image? That ends my presentation today about the different organ systems in representative animals. Once again, I am Dr. Vernie Kudicano, Master Teacher of Mampandan National High School, Senior High School.